Okay, it is now uh, around six o'clock. Uh, we're in open session. Um, we we convene the uh, selectmen's meeting uh, in accordance with Governor, Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law 30A, Chapter 20. This meeting will be held remotely in an online conference mode hosted by zoom.com and members of the public will not be able to physically attend. The meeting will be broadcasted live on Comcast Channel 12 and can also be viewed via live stream WHCA TV. And it'll also be broadcasted on youtube.com. Uh, as customary, can we please rise for the Pledges of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, and justice for all. Thank you. And as customary, uh, please, we'll have a moment of silence and in your thoughts, uh, please hope that uh, and pray that anyone who is affected by the COVID-19 uh, gets healthy soon. Thank you very much. Uh, the only thing that's on our agenda is on the new business, uh, is the uh, dealing with uh, looking, uh, talking about a possible town, new town administrator for the town of Whitman. And I would like uh, to hand this uh, meeting over to uh, Mr. Lynch who is the CEO of Community uh, Pentagon Associates, LLC. Mr. Lynch. Thank you. Wanna... Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, having us in tonight to report to you on uh, the status of the search uh, and presenting to you the names that we're recommending be moved forward to you for interviews. Uh, you may recall that I believe we started this process back in uh, September. Uh, we uh, went into the market uh, and started doing our active recruiting in uh, probably early October, but we actually were able to post the position on October 15th uh, with a deadline of uh, applications by November 13th. Uh, we, uh, we went out and tried to get you as many candidates as we could uh, and uh, tried to spread the word uh, far and near. And um, we ended up having 30 applicants uh, that uh, submitted application materials. Uh, we focused in on probably about a dozen that uh, you know, we, we either knew or uh, saw for the first time and that we wanted to um, take a look at. Uh, that uh, resulted in uh, a number of preliminary interviews that we held, uh, I believe it was uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and, um, uh, as a result of that and doing some, some background checks on some people, uh, we're presenting to you tonight four names uh, of candidates. Um, I think it's a good pool uh, for you. Uh, I think you, hopefully you'll, you'll see some uh, very qualified people there that uh, uh, can bring a, a lot to the table in terms of helping Whitman with uh, their issues and their challenges and opportunities. Uh, particularly as it relates to uh, finance, uh, municipal finance, uh, economic development, project management, and just overall uh, administration of the town. Uh, they all have municipal experience, uh, some uh, probably one would say more than others, uh, but they all bring uh, something unique, I think, and uh, are strong candidates for you to consider. Uh, if I could, and I know that there's probably people watching and they don't necessarily have uh, the materials that you have in front of you, uh, but in alphabetical order, the four candidates that we're uh, putting forward, uh, the first candidate is Peter Caruso. Uh, Peter is currently the uh, town administrator with the town of Millville. Uh, Millville, for um, those of you who don't know, is out in the uh, southern central portion of the state. It's a very, it is a relatively small town, um, but it's a town that's had some very serious financial issues. Uh, and uh, in fact, I believe it was about two years ago, they had quite a write-up in the um, Boston Globe with the uh, extent of their financial issues. So 
Peter has been out there now for just, uh, I think, just over a year uh, working uh, to help resolve some of those issues. Um, he was recently a finalist in the town of Kingston uh, for their town administrator position. He was chosen by their screening committee to move forward to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, he, he did not receive that position, uh, but uh, he certainly impressed a number of the members of the board uh, in the town of Kingston uh, with his, his knowledge and experience. Uh, he's been dealing, as I say, with some financial issues out there, but also some issues that may go a bit beyond that in terms of um, some uh, potential uh, um, wrongdoing that he's uh, been working with the uh, a number of agencies on. So he's, he's really been in a uh, fix up mode out there. His background is primarily private sector. Uh, as you can see from his, his resume, he's in, he in fact owned his own business for a period of time. Uh, he's an accountant by profession. Uh, he got his uh, municipal experience uh, as a member of the board of selectmen and a member of the finance committee in the town of Sherburn. Uh, where he served for a number of years. And uh, I don't want to steal his thunder of uh, when you interview him, but uh, you will hear him tell you that he, uh, in that capacity, uh, he got the municipal bug um, and uh, wanted to become more involved in municipal administration. Uh, and so he has uh, sought these positions out and as I say, is now serving in that capacity uh, in the town of Millville. Uh, and um, I think he, he brings something to the table for you to, to take a look at. The second uh, candidate is, um, and we have provided you with uh, you know, reference comments that were received. Now these are public documents. So you know, we try to pull this information together and make it available to you uh, to give you a perspective of what others that work with these people think. Uh, I should say that at the outset, uh, perhaps before we get into some of the other candidates. Um, you know, it, they are public documents though, so we're very careful with the way that we write them, uh, but they're, they're intended to give you some sense of the types of projects and types of work that they've done in their prior positions and what, uh, what people think of them. So, um, you know, we, we craft these very carefully uh, to get the message out to you. Um, and um, we certainly are available for consultation with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis to talk about anything you read there in their resumes uh, before the interviews or uh, after the interviews. Again, uh, your second candidate uh, is no stranger to Whitman. Uh, your, uh, she's your uh, interim uh, administrator right now and formerly uh, the assistant uh, town administrator, uh, Lisa Green, obviously she, um, brings a knowledge of the town. Uh, she served as uh, assistant administrator there in uh, Whitman for uh, about four years now. Uh, and um, as a lawyer by profession, uh, working for the Social Security Ad Administration. Uh, she also served on your board of selectmen uh, for uh, about five years before uh, she was made the assistant town administrator uh, and had to step off the board. Um, and actually, I think she probably, she would have had to have stepped off the board before she was made uh, the assistant. So that's what she did. Uh, and uh, uh, she has a good uh, working knowledge, certainly of Whitman and the issues that uh, you're grappling with there. Uh, so she's our uh, second candidate that we're presenting to you. The third candidate is a um, uh, Lincoln Heineman. Uh, Lincoln, um, this is actually the first time uh, that uh, we've actually I, we've, we've talked to Lincoln in the past, but not in any uh, capacity as an applicant. So this is the first time he's in uh, as an applicant with one of our searches. Uh, he's relatively um, uh, nearby in the town of Situate, as is, um, I should have noted, Peter Caruso. Um, Lincoln's uh, background, uh, he's um, uh, you know, the, currently the director of finance for the town of Hanover. Uh, has served in that capacity for three years now. Uh, he had previously worked for the, uh, the Commonwealth uh, the State as well as some private sector uh, organizations. His background is uh, primarily finance, but uh, in the capacity of uh, being uh, the finance director in Hanover, he's had an opportunity to become involved with other aspects of the overall administration of the town. Uh, and he's looking for an opportunity to move up into the um, town administrator uh, position. 
Uh, he was recently, or a year or so ago, the uh, finalist as well in the town of Abington, uh, and um, uh, has a very, uh, very strong academic credentials. So with a master's degree from uh, NYU, uh, with a master's degree in business administration, uh, he's um, done a, a good job with the finances over in Hanover. I think one of the things that um, you you may want to take a look at uh, if he doesn't bring it up is the work that he's done on a budget document that's a, a government finance officers association um, um, award winning budget uh, that um, you know lays out uh, the detail about the town's finances uh, in order to uh, communicate the overall strategic vision of the town and the strategic direction uh, as well as just the way the, the finances are being managed. So um, uh, again, I think uh, some, some good strength there. Uh, he's also served as a member of the finance committee in Situate for uh, about 10 years. Uh, again, that's where he got his real um, knowledge of local government uh, coming out of that and then was interested in using that to uh, you know, take the position in the town of Hanover. Uh, so he, um, uh, he's your third candidate. Your fourth candidate is uh, Michael McGovern. Uh, Michael is currently the town administrator in the town of Shirley. Uh, he's been there now, uh, I think coming up on three years, if not quite three years yet, uh, uh, 2018. So about two years, and I think coming up on uh, his third. Um, prior to that, he was the assistant city manager in the city of Lowell. Um, you may recall I was the city manager in the city of Lowell. Michael came after I left. So Michael never worked for me in Lowell, uh, but um, I'm, I'm familiar with Michael certainly from his time working for the vocational school um, uh, in the region. Uh, the, uh, so, uh, but his, uh, he too has an, uh, dealt with some serious financial issues out in the uh, town of uh, Shirley, which is sort of been a, baptism by fire for him, dealing with some of those issues that uh, they have out there. Uh, so he's uh, got his, he's you know, certainly shown his, shown his uh, finance chops, if you will. Uh, in um, Lowell, as well as uh, Shirley, he's had an opportunity to work on a number of uh, major capital projects, uh, as well as economic development initiatives. Um, so he's, he's got some, some interesting background there in terms of large organization in the city of Lowell. And then obviously Shirley, um, again, in the center of the state is a smaller community, uh, but it's where he's been able to work as a town administrator and um, you know, sort of deal with a number of the day-to-day -day operational issues of the town, as well as the financial issues that he's been um, uh, working on. So um, uh, he too was a, a finalist in the town of Kingston. Uh, and uh, again, came uh, highly recommended to the Board of Selectmen there by their screening committee, as well as um, uh, it impressed the, uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, in their interview. Uh, and uh, they spoke highly of him as a result of that. So uh, again, it was not the choice, uh, but came, um, uh, you know, was uh, certainly impressed in his, in his time there. So those are the, your four candidates. Uh, you know, they, they all come with, uh, as I say, with municipal experience. Uh, they all uh, have uh, taken on some, some challenges and um, that's, uh, that's what we have. So happy to take any questions that people might have or either now or as I say, one-on-one -on -one, uh, regarding the candidates uh, and happy to talk about the process from here. Does anybody have, okay, thank you very much, Bernie. Does anybody have any questions of Mr. Lynch? Wow, seeing none. Um, actually. What? Okay, I, good, Justin. I may as well. Um, so obviously we all know Lisa Green lives in Whitman. You mentioned the first two candidates live in Situate. Yes. Um, yes. Where does uh, Mr. McGovern live? If he was Mr. McGovern, <laughs> Mr. McGovern currently uh, lives between two homes, if you will. Uh, he lives uh, during the week in Chelmsford because it's closer to Shirley. Uh, and he lives in Plymouth on the weekends. Uh, so if he were to um, be appointed the town administrator of Whitman, he would be living in Plymouth. Okay. 
That's interesting. Um, I guess, uh, I don't know if this would you consider appropriate, uh, all four applicants, uh, we know Lisa, I mean, are they family members? Uh, I mean, you, uh, you that, that, answer, that, that, that's something that we don't, uh, we really can't get into with, uh, with uh, candidates in terms okay. of. No, I, I was just curious because it wasn't mentioned. Yep. Does anybody, anybody else have any uh, questions? Uh, I, I do, Ken. Uh, the, the only question I have is I, the candidates are impressive. I would, um, if that's what we need, I would, I would move that we, uh, we interview the four candidates based on the recommendation of um, uh, community paradigm. But you know what I'd also like to see uh, between now and when we do the interviews is maybe Bernie, uh, a list of the uh, 30 candidates, just so I get a feeling for what the fields look like, uh, a list of, with with their, uh, you know, with their names, what they're doing for work right now. I can't give you a list of their names because those are confidential. Uh, what I can do is, as I can give you their background, I could put something together to give you the backgrounds of the people. Okay, I know that. They, well, are we sure their names are are, con are confidential? These aren't names that we would mention on a on a Zoom broadcast, but. Yeah, once we give the names out, once we give the names out to the, the board, they become open rec open public record. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. If you could put something together that would give, give us a feeling for the for sure. the candidate sure. for the candidate. yeah. Let me let me let me put something together on that um, as best I can. And uh, so. all right, all right. Thank you. Okay. All right, so I guess we're going to go uh, now discuss the process. Right. The um, and uh, and hopefully, uh, Carl, if I could, uh, are you hoping to have that list before the interviews or before the decision or just in general? Uh, just in general, if we could get it before the interviews, it would be fine. It would just give me an idea of the the context. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, from which the four people came. Yeah, I'll do my best on that. And again, I wish I, you know, one of the one of the perils of the open meeting law and public records laws in Massachusetts is that it it you know it's a great uh, it's a great thing to provide total transparency to uh, to people, but what it does too is it uh, it sort of cools the um, the pool of candidates for positions because uh, a number of these people apply for positions with the understanding that their name does not become public, nothing about them becomes public unless they become a finalist. Right. And then, um, so that becomes, you know, it, it, it ends up hurting uh, the process sometimes because you lose good candidates that don't want to risk their jobs right. to right. apply. Um, so, but I, what I will try to do is, as best I can within a short period of time, put something together and give you some of that information. Um, thank, thank, thank you. Okay. Um, the, the big question I guess we have is how you want to proceed with uh, the interviews themselves, uh, whether you want to try to do all four at one time, uh, you know, right in a row, or whether you'd rather do two, um, per um, two at a time, something like that. Uh, in order I, to... I, okay, Brian, I guess the question is, is how long do you think an interview of each person would take? I generally say an hour. So you're talking about a, a four hour meeting? Potentially. If we do all four at once. Potentially. I, I, if it was me, probably the easiest day or the best day to do it would be like on a Friday. Because of the fact that, first of all, town hall is closed. So um, if uh, anybody wants to go there, there'd be no interruptions or phone calls. But Friday seems to be uh, an open day for a lot of us. So I, I don't know. But unfortunately, in December, you got Christmas and New Year's on Friday. Right. Well, there's a couple of a couple of options here. That One is I, I wasn't sure what your intentions were in terms of whether to do this, communities are doing this differently. Some, you know, um, some communities have done the entire process by Zoom. 
uh, uh, and a few communities have brought candidates in. Um, the, the benefit of bringing candidates in is generally considered to be that you get to see their facial expressions. Right, exactly. You can read and, them. But unfortunately, and, and then, there are some and, of us that, that can't do that. And then I was going to say, but because of the COVID, they're masked right. and you can't do that. So, um, so in any event, uh, we have to talk sort of how we want to do that. Uh, this Friday, if you wanted to do something this Friday, the 18th, I'm totally free. And I could, we could set something up for that day if you want. How does the board feel? Well, I, Dan, I, th I think if, if we're looking at between 45 minutes and an hour for an interview, I think it's better to do two at a time yes. rather than try to do all four. And I think that, I think dates that, that we were looking at were um, 16th, 17th, or 18th of next week. Could I, could I make a, sure. just a, sure. let me just throw an idea out and, and, and I'm still, I, I have, I have held the daytime of the 15th. I have all day 16th, the daytime of the 17th, and I have all day 18th available. And one possibility rather than doing four hours in a row is to do two, take a couple hours off, do two more. We've certainly done that with communities before. Okay, 16th, I have a South Rovo Tech meeting. Uh, what? Um, that's at that's night? School committee, school committee. That's at night? That's at seven at night. Oh, unless we, during the day. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what people's availability is during the day. I think uh, I'm probably the, the most conflicted there. Um, I, I got one personal day left to use, so let's, uh, let's burn it on this. <laughs> I, I think your day well, you know, takes importance here, Dan. Huh? I think your day job takes importance here. I know it. <laughs> School committee can miss you that night. Uh, um, we're doing contracts. Uh, um, I, I personally think we, because we have to do this by Zoom, I, I don't like the idea of uh, spreading it out multiple days, uh, especially where we have to uh, post these meetings um, within 24 hours online and on cable that, uh, I mean, I would guess we have to ask the, the candidates all the same questions. And, right. Um, yeah, and I, and I want to, I would, I'm sorry to jump in there, Randy. I, I do want to talk to you about that because I have some questions that I want to get out to you individually. I want to explain what I, what I want to do on that a little bit later. Okay. Too. So I, I just, um, I, I would hate to have somebody uh, get notice and be able to formulate their answers and uh, by catching one of these meetings on YouTube and, and giving an right. unfair advantage that way. Right, yeah, exactly, I, I agree with you. Why not, we'll say Friday the 18th. Okay. Friday, Friday the 18th is fine with me. Maybe two, two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. Or something like that. With a yeah. lunch break, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we can start like uh, uh, 10 to 12, 10 to 12 and then one to three. Something like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then if you want, at the end of that, uh, you can then make your decision. You can say, we're ready, or let's take the weekend. And we can, um, we could even talk now about setting up a meeting for the following week, at which time you could make a decision. You, you, if you needed to, you could make your decision the following week. Yeah. Well, we do have a meeting posted for the 20th, right? 21st? No, no we, we meet on the uh, 15th. Well, the 15th, yeah. All right. 15th. So, and did we post another meeting? No, I, for some odd reason, I thought we were meeting on the 22nd as well. But So that would be the 22nd you're talking, Bernie? Yeah, probably, if, if that works for you, yeah. Sharon, that might actually that might benefit the rest of the board because we may need to space out some of the stuff planned for the 15th. Right. That agenda is getting got, full. Right. And then you have, well, then Christmas is 
three days away. Right. So it's either either we make the decision on the 22nd or the 29th, either yep. one. Yep. Yeah, if you want to, if you, if, yeah, if you want to try to do something like that, either one. Well, how about if we uh, turn around, we say that uh, we'll have the interviews, uh, two hour intervals and then an hour off for lunch and then another two hours, we'll say Friday the 18th. And yep. what time do you, would you like to start? Why don't we start at, uh, why don't we start at like 9.30? All right, 9.30 the 18th. Yeah. That way. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll set it up so that we go 9.30. We'll do like an interview starting at quarter of 10 to give us a chance to organize ourselves. Right. We'll do an interview for about an hour. Uh, we'll have a, you know, the next candidate will come into the waiting room. Um, I don't know if there's any, I don't know. Uh, I can run this on my Zoom uh, so that I can control the waiting room. Um, the only question is whether you're, and maybe we can talk to your uh, cable access people to see if they can hook, how they would, I don't know how they're hooking into Zoom here uh, or whether someone's downloading the uh, recording to them to run. Um, Josh, uh, Justin, do you know? I think Eric is uh, still on the line if he wants to answer Eric, that. you on the line? I did, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, so um, we can take the file. I know before this meeting, we were talking about possibly playing these as a recorded only, not going live. Um, okay. We could do either. It's going to be harder to go live with them um, because of the nuance of switching from perhaps room to room. Um, so I think that the after the fact would be best. That, that'd be perfect. We, what we can do is I can, I, can, I can do it on my Zoom account. Sure. And then I, I can, that's generally how I do these interviews. So I, I can just, uh, after the meeting is over, if you can just get me a Dropbox or a Google Drive to send it to. No problem. That'll be, we'll be done. Great. Okay, so that'll work. Right. All right, so we'll schedule, uh, You'll if you can send us uh, the Zoom uh, in information to uh, get on, yep. and we'll start at uh, the 18th, uh, we'll click on at 9.30 a.m. and we'll go from there. Yeah, we'll, we'll run up to close to 12. Right. Then we'll take, if we, if we get done a little bit earlier, we'll, you know, then we'll come back at one o'clock. Right. Do it like that. Okay. And of course, we'll be taking the uh, applicants as they are listed alphabetically, right? It's perfect. Yeah. I mean, that's the fairest way of doing it. Yep. Sounds like a plan. Okay. And then um, between now and then we can decide when we want it, whether we're going to have a selections meeting. We can talk about that on the 15th. We can talk about if we're going to have it on, if we need to have it on the 22nd or the 29th, okay. depending on other town business to make our decision. Yeah. And that way it just let me know and I'll, so I can book it up. So, right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Brian. Um, I will not be available on the 29th. So for me, it would have to be the 22nd. Okay. Uh, let's yeah, hope. Well, Dan, just a, a heads up that 29th, that, that week between Christmas and New Year's is um, Christmas vacation for, for schools. So I don't know if any of the candidates will be traveling. Okay, or... you're right. Okay. So we'll, we'll, then at our, at our meeting on the 15th, we'll, uh, we'll talk about posting it for the 22nd and we'll get the applicants there. And, um, Oh, uh, the tw they'll be there on the, right. They'll be there on the 18th, but. Right. Oh yeah, we don't need them on the. You, we you don't need them on the 22nd. We can just make our choice and then we can notify them. Yep. yep. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Okay. You guys are very good. All right. Yeah. Um, Anything else? The two things. Um, okay. What, what I'm going to do between now probably now in the next, uh, within the next day, within the day, uh, I'm going to send you out uh, some draft questions. Okay. And you take a look at them, see what you want to add, delete, you know, just send me back an email just saying, uh, I, I think we, I'd like to know about this. Okay. Uh, and what we generally do is the way we do this is the way we've done it in most communities is we, um, um, you know, we keep the same consistent questions, 
but maybe with a candidate, there's a particular thing in their resume that you want to focus in on that's related to one of those topics. So for instance, uh, on economic development, uh, if we, we're going to have a question on economic development and you read that candidate B has worked on a particular project that they list in their resume or that's listed in their reference comments that you want to learn more about uh, to see if you can understand that candidate a little bit more, then you let me know and then we'll, we'll work that in. And I guess that goes to the other question or other topic related to the questions. A process that we've been using in most communities now, but it's totally up to you, you're the ones that are making this decision, is uh, rather than do a, a very um, formal question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, is we try to use, uh, we try to act as a facilitator it's where we have more of a dialogue with the candidates. Uh, and I'll give you an example of where that might work. Again, with economic development being a potential topic. Uh, when we're talking to candidates about municipal finance, we want to understand their budgeting uh, knowledge. We want to understand their approach. Uh, we, we want to understand what they, how they manage municipal finances. At the end of the day, I think we all agree that municipal finances are somewhat limited by how much tax revenue we get. And so what many candidates ultimately will speak of as they go through that process of how they make do with less or how they are able to maintain or sustain services is they'll speak to the importance of economic development. Well, that's another question that we're gonna be asking them. So if, they're start, if they start to run with that topic, then wouldn't, it's often better to just let them go and have that back and forth between board members and the candidates on that topic, rather than stopping them or have them give their whole economic development answer. And then two questions later, start talking about economic development again and basically repeating themselves. So it, it makes for more productive time, it makes for a little bit more, a little less stilted conversation or stilted uh, presentation and more discussion. So uh, it's just an idea I would throw out to you. This is what we've done. And as I say, in a number of communities where we act as the facilitator and raise the topic, have them address that, and then have you jump in with your follow-up questions and um, really try to drill down into the information they provide you. Okay, sounds good. Anybody else have anything of uh, Bernie? And so I'll send that out. I'll send those questions out and then we'll go back and forth on that. And the other point I just, I mentioned earlier that with the references that we gave you, the reference reports, um, if there's anything in these candidates' backgrounds or anything you want, even if you don't see anything in their backgrounds, if there's something you want to talk to me about, uh, you all have my email address because I sent you things today a few times. Uh, and, um, then at you and my phone number's on there. Email me, call me. If there's a, if there's something about one of these candidates that you say, I want to understand more of what they're talking about when they say they've done X, Y, or Z. Pick up the phone, call me, and and, and ask me, and uh, and I'll give you the background on on all of these candidates because there's things that obviously there's things that we know that um, there's nothing bad, but there's things we know that we want to be able to talk to you about if you. Have, have questions. Okay. Anybody else have any questions of Bernie? I have uh, one question. Yes. Did you discuss um, the parameters, the financial parameters of the of the salary for our town with these candidates? Uh, the it was listed in the ad that we uh, indicated. I believe the range was one hundred forty five thousand plus or minus. So, you know, that's one of those cases that when we, when you choose your candidate, we can talk to them and they can say, you know, maybe they're willing to go, maybe you need to pay a little bit more. Maybe you can pay a little bit less. So that would all be uh, negotiated out when you get to the contract, but that's your sort of your midpoint, if you will. Sure. Great. Thank you. I, I thought, I thought we were going to go with the, the starting of what Frank's salary was for the beginning, low point in the ad in the beginning. 
but we didn't. We went with the 145 plus or minus. Right. We went with up to 145, depending right. on the applications. Right. Okay. Um, just, I have a question regarding just a little bit more on the process, uh, Bernie. If you would. Sure. Um, I know we're talking about scheduling interviews, the four of them on the 18th. Um, could there be another situation where we did another round if all of a sudden the, the board is torn? Um, yes. So when we're just not bound to the 22nd, no. if you know further questions come up and in the decision making process, we wanted to bring people back and yes, let's solidify some answers and questions. A whatever. A absolutely, absolutely. You you are not you're not bound by anything here. You you can you know. I think uh, you've, you've taken a vote to move forward with these four interviews. Uh, again, I think uh, you have some strong candidates, very strong candidates here. And um, then you can, um, but at the end of this, if you say no, then, then we restart or we do something different. If you, but you know, more, that's an unlikely thing. I think that's unlikely, but uh, certainly a possibility you might say, uh, I'd like to have these two back. Or this one back, uh, or all four back, and have more questions. That's within your rights. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, because I'm thinking um, we. Know, I mean, even though we want to bring them back, we'll say the 18th, and maybe make a decision on the 22nd, we're not in a major rush. I mean, it's not like we don't not have. You know, we can't run the town without appointing right. someone. We have a, a an interim town administrator right now. Right. Lisa. So, I mean, it's like if if the board is hesitant on, you know, uh, con, torn between one or two candidates, I mean, if we have to wait until after the first of the year to make our decision, I don't see that as a major problem. No. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. To me, it's just, um, you know, you're starting, if you wait till after the first of the year, then, you know, these people may have to give two weeks notice or all, all right. this, you yeah. know, getting into budget time, uh, contracts are, are, are up this year. And it, it, we're in a position where I, I think we're better off, uh, you know, even if we had to meet a couple times a week to expedite this. Oh yeah. Done. Um, with what we have pending coming up, I think we need, you know, either that permanent position uh, filled in, in that person, given the reins to, you know, at that point, captain the ship, uh, yeah. whoever we choose. But I think that they do, the, the time crunch is May's coming, town meeting's coming, and, and there's a lot of stuff to get done between now and then. Okay. And, I, and I would also caution you or alert you to the fact that in uh, probably, uh, uh, you know, in probably three of these cases, uh, that's because it's only three that's relevant, uh, they have more than likely a 30 day notice period in their contracts. So. Okay. Okay. Um, Dan, Dan, I, Dan, I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, a, a question of Bernie. Bernie, did the concurrent um, search in Kingston, in your view, limit the pool of people who are available or applying to Whitman? Was there, yeah. is there a relationship there? Okay. No, no, no. You know, I, I will tell you that uh, the, I will tell you this about your pool, that the candidate who was chosen in Kingston, um, did not apply to Whitman. Uh, as you know, I, because I told you, two of the candidates that you're looking at were finalists in, uh, in Kingston. Right. Um, and there were some other people who applied for your position that were applicants in, in Kingston. Um, so it's, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't negatively impact you in any way. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, yes, yes, I, yes. I did, a related question for uh, for Bernie. So um, obviously, yeah, two candidates, two of our finalists were also finalists in Kingston. Are there any other concurrent searches going on where these candidates might be uh, receiving offers from another town? Not that I am working on, uh, and I don't. I, I, and and I would say no because I think we're we have all we're doing all of the searches right now in in the state. Um, so, uh, but so no. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, um, I think uh, 
Dr. Kowalski um, made a motion to accept all four of these candidates into the, <coughs> excuse me, the process. <clears throat> and I don't think we, we did anything with it. So I would like to uh, second his motion so we can make it official to uh, include all four of these candidates in the final interviews. Okay, is there any further discussion on that motion in a second? Hearing none, roll call. We'll go with uh, Carl. Yes. Randy? Yes. Brian? Yes. Justin? Yes. And I will vote yes. Okay, that clears mm -hmm. that up. Is there anything else that needs to be helped dealt with until we uh, open up uh, our interviews uh, on the 18th? Well, actually, we'll be meeting on the 15th, but that nothing to do with this. Yeah. Nope. I, nothing from me. So that's I'll, it. I'll be in touch and hopefully we'll have a chance to talk. Sounds Thanks. good. Good. Thank you. Brian. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I hear Second. a second? Second. Uh, no discussion. Uh, <laughs> Kyle? Yes. Uh, Randy? Yes. Brian? Yes. And Justin? Yes. And I will vote yes. Okay, I'll see you all uh, on the 15th when okay, we uh, have you. our regular meeting. Wash your hands. Have a good weekend. Yeah, nice. All right, thank you.